Okay, so three weeks ago, if you had mentioned uh, Flat Earth to me, I would say that uh, you were crazy. And I believe that the Earth is spherical, no question about that. I believe that we live on a spherical Earth. But a lot of people are beginning to discuss in the last three or four months the possibility of a flat Earth. So I want to say um, just a, a few things about, about that possibility. I got stuck three weeks ago on the tarmac in New Orleans, and every hour they, they delayed us for another hour, and we were sitting on the tarmac, and uh, people began to reschedule their flights, and there was a family sitting behind me on the plane, that tried to reschedule from New Orleans to Cape Town and could only get flights through Paris, France that were over 35 hours in, in that family getting home. Under duress and trying to reschedule their flights and uh, there was no uh, short hop from Miami down to Rio over to, to Africa. Not possible. The only way they were going to get home was a 35-hour flight through Paris, France, which on the flat Earth map would be a straight line, but it's way, way out of line if it, uh, if you're considering that you live on a on a globe. Another thing that happened around three weeks ago was that I began to uh, re-view uh, Rob Skiba's videos on on uh, flat earth and considering that possibility and I think his video is very entertaining I, I, I check into him from time to time I, I check in on his videos to see what he's talking about and just about the same time uh, as as he begins to discuss the flat earth I'm reminded of this family that uh, that had to try to get their way back to Cape Town so I think that Christians would like to know that the earth is flat, it would be comforting to them, but I don't think that's necessary. I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's imperative that if you're going to begin to discuss the flat earth that you do so from the standpoint of data and experimentation. I don't think that you should just begin to discuss something that uh, doesn't have any any basis to it. So I'm going to propose in this video three tests that can be done to determine whether there's a, whether the earth that you're living on is a flat earth or whether it is a, a curved earth, a sphere. I watched with interest the other night on uh, Jaronism's channel his test for determining whether the earth is flat, my hat is off to him for being willing to try and to be willing to try on a, on a live, with a live audience. Uh, so I'm waiting to hear uh, his, uh, his results from his test to see what, what he would have to say. Uh, so the first test that I want to point out it has been discussed. It's on YouTube right now. Rob Skiba has been talking about it and others. And that's the Anacapa Arch in the San Francisco Bay Area. It's 40 feet above the waterline and can be seen from 16 miles away. So that, that test is uh, uh, under uh, out there as a possibility. And I'm hoping that someone will will run that test and and uh, let us know what their what their uh, their data comes up with. If you're sitting with a uh, eye level five feet above the above the waterline on the on the opposite side of the bay and you are viewing 16 miles away through a through a theodolite, you should be reading an upward inclined angle of one minute and 25 seconds. If you're on a flat earth, you should read one minute and 25 seconds upward to the top of the Anacapa Arch. And if you live on a 
spherical Earth, you will, from five feet above the water line, be turning a negative angle of two minutes and 23 seconds into the horizon without seeing the Anacapa Arch. So that's what we need for someone to do is to, to go to that location on the opposite side of the bay, set up an instrument, a theodolite, two-second theodolite on the opposite side of the bay, turn the angle, let us know what your results are. One way or the other, um, the mathematics is simple. Uh, it's high school mathematics. There is no co college level algebra that's required, college level calculus or spherical coordinate systems, anything other than that. So the test is very simple. Uh, anybody can do it. Anyone in the, in the California, uh, San Francisco Bay Area can, can easily take a, a day out to perform that simple test. The second one that I'm going to propose is uh, a line of sight from Signal Mountain, Tennessee, from the top of the mountain on the face of the, the east side of the mountain taking a line of sight shot over to the top of Big Frog Mountain, which would be eastward, and it's on the Continental Divide. It's the highest mountain on the Continental Divide. And there's nothing higher than Big Fro Frog Mountain on the, uh, on the west side, all the way to the Mississippi River. So a very simple test. Go to the top of Signal Mountain and turn a line of sight over to Big Frog Mountain. If you live in a Cartesian coordinate system and a, a flat earth, you're going to turn an angle of 34 minutes and 14 seconds to the top of Big Frog Mountain from Signal Mountain. And if the earth is a sphere, most of that mountain will be below the horizon. And turning the same angle to the top of the Big Frog Mountain, you will turn an angle of only zero minutes and 15 seconds to the top of the mountain. So there's only, there's only two ways that that outcome can come out. You, you would set up your theodolite and you would turn the angle. You will read either 34 minutes and 14 seconds positive vertical angle, or you would read zero minutes and 15 seconds. A positive angle again. There's there's not another another outcome for you to have. So go to Signal Mountain, turn the angle, and see what the actual data will tell you. That it's going to be conclusive. If you were to come up with an angle in between those two angles, then the mathematics becomes a lot more more complicated and you would have to, to, to do some calculations. The, the, the parameter would be that the Earth would be something of a uh, oblate spheroid shape, and you'd have two different radiuses that you would have to contend with. The radius that goes around the equator would be one radius, and the radius that goes around the north and south poles would be, would be another radius. So you would come up with something in between those two angles. And, and then in that case, the math would be difficult. But to, to run this simple test, uh, you can, you can uh, go to Signal Mountain and turn some vertical angles. The third test I want to discuss uh, just briefly is the Chicago skyline being seen from a point on the opposite side of the, the uh, Great Lake. Obviously, if you get high enough above the horizon, if you, if, if you get high enough above the, the uh, shoreline on the uh, east side of the lake, if you get high enough up on the sand dune, for sure you're going to see the Chicago skyline. But the question is, how high above the shoreline do you have to get to see the, the lower levels of buildings that are uh, sticking up above the above the horizon there. That again is a simple test. Uh, it does not require more than high school mathematics. 
uh, and I would leave that to the people in the Chicago area to, to come up and, and perform that test. As for myself, I'm going to prepare five videos on this subject. My second video will be an explanation of the, the math for the flat earth and the math for the uh, spherical earth. It's very simple. Uh, I will explain that in video number two. In video number three, I will go to Signal Mountain, Tennessee, and I will turn the angle to the top of Big Frog Mountain. And I'll, I'll uh, check back in with you, and I will let you know whether, whether you're dealing with an angle that's 0 minutes and 15 seconds positive vertical angle, or 34 minutes and 14 seconds of positive vertical angle. So that video should be coming out about the end of July at some point in time. Fourth video would be uh, the Anacapa Arch Experiment. I would hope that someone will perform that before I would have to go out there and, uh, and run the test myself. But uh, if, if it does get to be September or October and no one has run that test, then, then I will run the test uh, myself and also report that back in video number five, in which I will tell you whether the Earth is flat or spherical. So, I hate to see videos from people who are producing videos without data. I think it's important that we have data. I think it's important that uh, Christians would not be presenting the viewpoint that, uh, that the Earth is flat based on uh, a more of a desire rather than having the data to do it. Um, the math is simple and the tests are simple. Uh, you don't need to resort to a flat horizon video and you don't need to resort to, to a uh, ships going over the horizon video. The, the math is simple. We now have technology that wasn't available in Copernicus Copernicus's day, we can turn very precise angles, and that will tell the story. Thank you for watching this video.